I mean, look, like at the end of Snyder 2.0, right? Like six and six seasons would have been crushed by us and felt like there's not much momentum being generated there coupled with, and we'll see what recruiting does between now and then, but coupled with some lackluster recruiting seasons as well. I think the other part of it is like, hey, I think Skyler being back is a very big deal. I know there's, you know, we go back to last year, there was a lot of debate before he got hurt about just how good of a quarterback he actually is. I tend to think he's a better quarterback than some do, but that, that should be a very big deal to have him back at quarterback and with the offense and some of the pieces that are there and Malik Knowles and Deuce Vaughn, like they should be set up to have a decent enough year. I, I'm with you. I think anything less than seven and five would still be slightly disappointing. Now we'll see how things play out. I don't, God forbid somebody else key would go down with an injury. I won't even mention a name to put that evil on anybody, but you right. know th- that can always change things. But yeah, I think seven and five or better would make you feel like that the program is is at least kind of back on track to where you felt like it would be headed. I would agree. And all things being equal. I think you can probably make some, just some justifications in general, even if they were to go six and six and, and make a bowl game because it's it still feels a little bit better and, and gets somewhat of the bad taste out of your mouth from what we all saw during the 2020 season and how that that you know finished. But I think seven and five is really the benchmark that they need to get to feel you know pretty good about the trajectory of the program or for us to feel good about the trajectory. Of the program, and like you said, if if Skylar Thompson's as good as you know some people think, and I think he's decent, and you should be able to win seven games with a six-year senior at quarterback, in 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 just in that scenario, in my opinion. Keeping in mind too that I mean that Stanford game is trickier than a lot of what they would have, and to be honest, and you outlined this, the, the non-conference schedule in general is one that you should be fairly fairly leery of with uh, Southern Illinois and Nevada also. Um, but yes, I, I do on general principle agree with you as far as that's concerned. If they don't hit that, I mean, I think then you have to start looking toward, okay, this offseason there were not real major staff changes. There was the reshuffling, but now we're talking about like something something's going to have to change, right? If you go through a non-COVID year where we're seeing now the baseball series, for instance, this weekend is going to be full capacity. It looks like we're headed to a normal season next year. Right. Uh, like You'd have to change something up conceivably if it is a five and seven kind of a year next year right yeah and, and to be honest think of it this way when's the last time they had consecutive losing seasons that that would be problematic it's been a while <laughs> since was did ron prince have it yeah right it would be 2007 2008 yeah you're right that'd be the last time so it would all be 15 years ago Yes, yes. And and again, you know, I mean, people would say like COVID, COVID. But I think if I'm judging by like the general tone of the fans that are the real diehards that certainly read the boards all the time, I mean, people seem to be very fed up with it right now. It's always hard and dangerous, I think, to judge that too much on like how the fan base feels mm-hmm. overall in general. But I mean, if that were to happen, yeah, you're going to have a lot of fans that will be very upset and and not the other context to this is not just that that is happening in a nutshell which would be enough to make people upset but in the last year the other thing that's changed and and this really can go for the conversation about looking back at the last year is that chris Kleiman got a new contract and gene taylor got a new contract um both got sizable raises and salaries that are nothing crazy and just bring them really up to market value but hey it's a lot of money for k-state and you're going to need to produce results if you have those new contracts. Yeah, and, and like you said, this is nothing against Chris Kleiman or Gene Taylor for signing those contracts. Get your money. I'm going to, you know, we all try to get our money. But at the end of the day, the timing was, for both of them, wasn't great because also there was, you know, there's been complaints coming out of the athletic department, just like, I guess talking points about like look at all this money that Texas is paying for buyouts or what Iowa State paper buyouts in the middle of a pandemic when people are getting laid off or you know furloughed and stuff of that nature. Well, I mean, Kansas State did you know hand out extensions during a pandemic as well. I mean, I mean they didn't pay massive buyout prices when they could have obviously, but they still extended Chris Kleiman and extended Gene Taylor. Here's the problem: is is if they got those contracts. The, as soon as they took over, as soon as they were hired, nobody would have thought anything of it. 
the fact is they didn't sign those contracts when they were hired. They, they signed them this year. And it just, it just makes you, it gives you an, an uneasy feeling. I can, I can, I can understand the frustration from, from fans when, you know, you, we, we, they cry foul a little bit over financials in terms of why they can't do some things, but at the same time, they can still, you know, give extensions to Chris Kleiman and Gene Taylor and years that were far from acceptable in, in the eyes of fans. Well, and that clearly, if we're talking about just like the narrative that permeates a lot of the fan base right now, I mean, that, that is definitely what it is, that there's this frustration that, hey, it, it would appear some things couldn't be done because there was not enough money to go around or there was, you know, some kind of concern about finances in a way, and then, yeah, you're giving out these raises at the same time too. Now, I, I don't know that I could tell you that I have like a full 100%, you know, full story on what exactly has happened there with that and how much that really is accurate but fair or not that's the perception and fair or not you're getting paid a lot of money and it is big time college athletics and yeah you have to go at a certain point produce and and at some point the excuses about COVID and whatever it's going to be just aren't going to hold up yeah and I, and I think you, you alluded to it there and I think that's the main complaint and it's one that I can understand now, I don't really quibble too much at these extensions to be quite honest I, I've brought it up before obviously as, as as poor timing and I think that that can't be argued I think it's poor timing but I think it was unfortunate just the way it kind of fell into place because like I said if they would have gotten those contracts from the get-go I don't think anyone would have been you know losing their mind it's the fact that they didn't get market value to begin with and they had to be put on market value after what many would share with without any production to really maybe warrant it so like if they weren't warranted it when they were hired i guess this past year i can understand why folks would say well how how have they done anything to necessarily warrant it now and i understand that that line of thinking and even then you know i mean the climbing the climbing one i think is less i i would listen to less complaints about the climbing contract because the discussions for that did start after the 2019 season, which I, I don't – there's no way you could tell me Kleiman did not eclipse expectations in 2019. I mean, I just – I flat believe that he did. And no, he definitely did. I guess the argument would be was – is is that a large enough sample size one year to do that? But that's the argument. Yeah, and, and I, my response would be, I mean – it did seem like Iowa was sniffing around a little bit. And at K-State, you just, you have to, you know, it would be unforgivable if you make the mistake the other way where you don't lock him up in mm -hmm. time and then somebody comes in and gets him pretty easily. So I, I, I get that. I completely understand that one. I really do. Uh, Gene Taylor was very much underpaid relative to his peers. And he did handle, I, it's so easy to forget, and people just, you know, it's our short attention spans, but like definitely handling the Bill Snyder situation, the way that that went down, was worth its weight in gold for this place around here. And I think, I mean, at that point, probably warranted like a raise to get back up to market value. It just, it did, yes, come at a time where the timing was was not a great thing as far as that is concerned. And Yes, then you branch out from football, and it's like you look at what's happening with basketball. Um, baseball here toward the end of the season has had a disappointing end, and just not, nothing has really gone the, according to plan this year. So I I listen more to the complaints on that front, but I still don't think it's anything to be overly, overly hyperbolic about here at the moment. No, and to be honest, like – those extensions, if if they were going to rock with Chris Kleiman and rock with Gene Taylor, and I mean that they're all in on those two, then they were going to have to happen at some point, and sooner the better. If you're, especially in Kleiman's case, you're you're leery of you know who who may entertain his services at some point. It's just yeah, it is unfortunate. Could it have waited maybe one more year? Maybe not after one of the more abysmal seasons across the board for Gene Taylor to get that extension maybe, but at the end of the day, like you said, he navigated the entire Bill Snyder situation with, with relative precision. And that wasn't, that was far from easy. Um, there's been athletic directors before him that tried to navigate similar situations revolving around Bill Snyder and others. And, and quite frankly, you know, face planted and he didn't, he landed it beautifully. And then on top of that, something that's probably going overlooked that we need to make sure doesn't go overlooked is he has made 
you know, facility improvements for the baseball program, for the soccer program. Um, going to have another one for the football program, probably launching here pretty soon in terms of the indoor facility. And on top of that, the volleyball, the Olympic indoor venue for volleyball. So he's done well on a number of fronts, but fans care more about winning than buildings to, Buildings going up. They care about both, but if you just get the buildings and not the wins, it's not necessarily as fun.